All right, welcome everyone. We are going to start our first assignment after the midterm, and we are going for a color spot illustration. The assignment sheet is here. If you go to Photo Bucket and to our class page, you can see examples under assignment seven of past students and my instructor examples. So the first thing you need to understand is what a spot illustration is. And what a spot illustration is, is a free floating image that's not contained by a rectangle. And the easiest way to think of it is as a, um, a t-shirt design or a sticker. So what are the steps that go, to it, go into it? Well, we're going to upload it into Photo Bucket, just like we did the Cartoon Jumble, which is another example of a spot illustration, as a PNG. So it has nothing behind it, and that way it can be put on any background. Just like our logo designs, you might want to think of offsets, how to make it work on a variety of backgrounds. Now, how do you start the process? Well, you start the process by sketching it, and then by making clean vector line work, and then by coloring in Photoshop behind the clean vectors. So we'll skip ahead a little bit. All right. So this is one example, right? You have a nice refined sketch. The theme for our spot illustrations is angry elementals again, because we get to do it as a logo and then really embellish on those ideas, make them a little bit more individual with the spot illustration with more detail. And then we color behind the line work, but in some cases we will replace the line work with color. That's called a color hold. Vector line work, sketch, so not the most refined sketch, right? So there's a, a lot of ways you can bring this together. The vector line work is created through compositing, kind of like we did with the cartoon jumble, and then live tracing in Illustrator, and then coloring behind the vector line work. And this is just the simplest type of digital color. This is called flat color. No gradations. Vector line work, digital coloring. This is called duotone color, where you have a light and dark variant on each local color. Sketch. Vector, line work, the color, this is what's called soft edge duotone with what's called half toning, but we'll get into that. And then you can see how it can be used on different products, different backgrounds. Vector, line work, duotone, this is cut edge color. So the color is, is very cleanly either a, a highlight or a shadow within each local color. Question, Jeff? Now what you'll notice is these illustrations are mostly self-contained, right? They don't reference uh, lots of different figures or lots of different things. They try to, if you have a lot going on, it's still kind of all contained in one shape. And that's why they're spot illustrations. So even if you have a lot of figures, they might be kind of centrally composed like this. So that when they're on a different background, the eye is still fully engaged with it. Now this is a great chance for you to play with your character design ideas, for animation, for graphic design. It's a good, good for you to get more practice with Illustrator and line work. But I'll show you a variety of ways. This is live tracing from this pencil sketch, right? And you can get kind of nice qualities of vector line work that might be more unique. So we'll be playing with variety of ways of coloring uh, both in Illustrator and in Photoshop. All right, to that end, you have a handout. So in your class, in the Canvas course, you can always go to assignment sheets and you can look at the, the one page description. But now that we're getting into more personal assignments as well, if you go to the home page and you go to links, you'll see some handouts that are very helpful for you. So the digital coloring, digital character coloring handout uh, pertains very closely to this assignment. And the basic approach is we have an idea, 
We kind of choose the best of our ideas. We sketch it out in the most refined way we can, maybe after trying a few different poses, a few different uh, compositions. We then will refine the vector outline. Now this vector outline was drawn completely in Illustrator using the blob brush tool from a past semester, and you can see that video in our YouTube page. But another way I could do this is simply print my sketch out at the size I want to ink it, put tracing paper over it, ink it with a permanent ink pen, scan that, that tracing, and then live trace that as vector line work that I then clean up in Illustrator. Once you have the vector line work, which is what we're hoping to get to by the end of today, then we can do flat color behind it, either in Illustrator, if you have some reason to want to do that, some people like coloring in Illustrator more, or in Photoshop. As long as you have vector line work, it doesn't matter which. And then we can go about the different processes of digital coloring, which is adding highlights, uh, softening duotones, doing um, different variations on what's called duotone coloring, whether it's hard-edged, Hard edged is here or cut edge. It's like cell shading and animation. And here it's soft edged and gradated. And then we can finish it off by going over the top of the black lines and replacing the black line with something. In this case, I re replaced it with a, a sienna red color. And then also adding little highlights and special effects like the glints on the armor and on the claws. Right? And then you can put that on a background. And it becomes a fully useful spot illustration. And I have a little link right to that video in our uh, playlist. So you can see exactly how that spot illustration was done, if that's the kind of thing you're going for. But I'm also going to show you what I'm doing for this semester. And so on the theme of angry elementals, I'm going back to the sketches I did for the logo. Because I generally over sketch, and this is much more appropriate this half here to a spot illustration than it is to a logo. So this is what I worked on for the logo. Now I'm going to work on this for the spot illustration. And I'll show you how I can bring that into Illustrator and start doing digital line work that way. But to save time, and this is often how I work, and because I gave you the resource for how to fully use the blob brush in other videos, um, I also inked it <laughs> on vellum. And when you ink on vellum, it gives you a cleaner scan than when you just scan your pencil. It's still not perfectly clean. It will still need to be cleaned up a little bit. And so this is what I can use to make vector line work. And so let me show you those two different options. Now, I'm pretty committed to this idea. But what's great about working digitally is I can open up my sketch in Photoshop to start this project. And my first task is to get vector line work. So I don't even need to worry about resolution too much yet. But instead of just doing a screen grab of it with my camera, I did scan this with a scanner. So it's already, it's five by six inches, not very large, but it's at a 400 pixels per inch resolution. And so I do recommend, even if you're working from just a pencil sketch, as long as it's a refined sketch, we probably want to use the scanners at the back of the room instead of just using the cameras uh, in the computer so we get a higher resolution scan. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate it, duplicate it, turn off the background, clean it up a little bit. I don't like to do any image adjustments on the scan itself. I like to do that all in Photoshop. So first I'll try a quick auto-tone adjustment, and then I'll go right to Levels. and really start cleaning it up. But because it's a pencil sketch, you'll see it won't get nearly as clean as my inking. So that's a good start. Now I can save that. As what I call a pencil test. So Carl, assignment seven. And I'm going to save it as a PNG. And the reason I have test in there is because I'm bringing it into Illustrator. OK, so that's one. Usually I would save to the desktop. I probably should have saved to the desktop, so let's just pretend I did. 
The next thing I can do is I can do the same thing with my ink one. This is just to show you the different options. With this one, just to see how it's a little different when I clean it up in Photoshop. So this is just the scanned inks. I'm going to go ahead and crop it because I inked it, I had already isolated it. I can duplicate it, Command J, do Auto Tone, see if that makes any difference. And then I can go to Levels Adjustments, brighten the highlights, probably most effective darken the midtones, decide how thick I want those to get. Right, and clean it up kind of as best I can. And then I'm going to save this as an ink test. Carl Assignment 7 ink test. As a PNG to the desktop. Command D is my shortcut to navigate there. So I have a pencil test here. I have an ink test here. I'm now going to leave Photoshop. And open up Illustrator. Now for one of these, I'm going to use Live Trace to get me started with my vector. For another of these, I'm not going to, to Live Trace what I bring in. Instead, I'm just going to use it as my guide to ink over with the blob brush. Now, this would be true whether I drew them by hand or whether I composited them from found sources, whether I worked with them. But this is the thing I like about the possibility. Okay, let's explore. Let's use the advantages of digital imaging a little bit. I'm going to take open up my pencil test in Photoshop just to remind you that, actually, let's do this that we have more options than you think. Because we're not just painting by hand, and drawing by hand. All right, so I'm gonna bring the pencil test and then I'm gonna bring the ink test on top of the pencil test. And they should line up because it was just a tracing I did, right? So I'm going to set it about 50% opacity, try to get them to line up. They were scanned at a similar size. But at a slight tilt, use the arrow keys. You can use warp to get them to stick. Because sometimes I'll make slightly different decisions when I ink. Kind of bring certain things out show you the whole process here. All right, so that matches up pretty well. I can bring that up to 100%. And now what I can do with both of these layers, especially if I rasterize the one I just brought in, is I can duplicate them, Command J, make a new group of them. And this is a new test of shapes. So let's say I like this, but I'm going to take that group and I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to distort it. First thing I might do is open it up at the bottom a little bit. Thinking of a t-shirt, I'm thinking of kind of the overall shape, and maybe I don't want it to be so so long. Um, maybe I want it to be wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And maybe this might be a little bit more fun, like almost more circular, right? And more versatile. And then I can compare. What do I like better? Turn these off. <laughs> that or that. What do you guys like better? This one? 